Think about the protest speeches you've heard. What made the good ones good? What made the bad ones bad? What if someone asked you to give a protest speech? What would you say? Here are 20 ideas for giving a powerful, effective, and or memorable protest speech. There's no one right way to give a protest speech. Take what you like and leave the rest to create your own special recipe. Grab their attention with a hook. A hook is something you say or do at the beginning of your speech that makes the audience want to listen to the rest of your speech. Here are some examples. Ask a rhetorical question. This type of question is usually used to make a point or to make people think rather than to get an answer. Some examples at Black Lives Matter protests are, who do you call when the police murder? When did my son go from cute to dangerous? And how many weren't filmed? Can you imagine what happens when the cameras are not rolling, when people are not videoing? Shock the audience with an alarming statistic, fact, or provocative statement. If you share information they haven't heard before, it will help them in conversations about the issue after the protest. And revealing dark secrets sometimes even brings results. Whole Foods is one of the companies that, sor that sources their cheese, their produce, some of their fish from prison-owned for-profit industries, Colorado Correctional Industries. They pay their workers $1.50 an hour. The minimum that they pay those workers is $0.60 cents an hour. Use a visual aid, prop, or costume. Ask for a show of hands on a question related to the issue. Could I get a show of hands? How many black trans women are in the room? Black trans women? Can I get a show of hands? How many black trans women are in the room? Can we just do trans in general? No. <laughs> um, could I also get a show of hands for the trans women of color in the room? That is why I'm here today. Make them laugh. If it's appropriate, tell a joke or funny story that is unique to your location or situation. All right, so basically what this scam is about, I've been covering this for years, I've been trying to explain this to audiences. And the easiest way I can explain this is that it was banks selling oregano as weed. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but somebody also asked me, so what y'all gonna do without the police? I said, live. Involve the audience. Asking the audience to participate in your speech by doing something together makes your speech more interesting and enjoyable for the crowd and enables them to express themselves and connect with each other. Here are some ways to involve them. Prompt them to use a physical gesture. These can be universal, like the raised fist that symbolizes solidarity. I want everybody to hold their fist up. This fist represents power and it represents unity. Or specific to your location, like the three finger salute in Thailand, or one hand covering the eye, and five demands, not one less, hand signal in Hong Kong. Encourage the protesters to greet each other with a shared gesture, like a handshake, elbow bump, fist bump, high five, double high five, or bow. Ask them to hold their phones up with the flashlights on. Ask the crowd to link arms, either to create a physical barrier or to form a circle and bow their heads before saying a prayer or engaging in a moment of silence in honor of someone who has died. All right, everybody, bow your heads, please. Ask the audience to put their bodies in a position that is relevant to the protest. Kneeling or taking a knee symbolizes opposition to racism and police brutality. At Black Lives Matter protests in 2020, protesters often lay down for 8 minutes and 46 seconds, the amount of time the police officer's knee was on George Floyd's neck before it killed him. 
lead a chant or song related to the protest. Use a human microphone. Also called the people's microphone, this is used to amplify the sound when not everyone can hear the speaker. Basically, the audience just repeats everything you say. Free education! Free education! Free education. We say yes, yes, we say yes, yes, to economic, to economic, and racial, and racial, and gender, and gender, and gender, and gender, and sexual, and sexual equality. equality. Share your artistic talent. The rich keep getting richer and the poor get poorer too. The wealth of the many in the hands of the few. I have dreamed on this mountain since first I was my mother's daughter. And they can't just take my dreams away with me watching. It starts to shoot it, then the smoke comes close. Now nobody can breathe, and now the brother keeps getting choked. Back down on her knees, no justice for the soul. When they stay pinning you down, will your story ever be told? And nobody got more welfare than Wall Street. Hundreds of billions have to operate falsely. And nobody went to prison, that's when you lost me. But my own, my job, and my life is what it cost me. Use a simple speech structure. The classic persuasion structure has two parts, problem and solution. Matt McGarity, a public speaking professor at the University of Washington, suggests when explaining a problem to give an example of who is being harmed and how they are being harmed. Yet we are still getting killed, brutalized, surveilled, massly incarcerated, and we are still having conversations with our children on how to have a conversation with the people that are supposed to protect and serve them so that those people don't in return kill them. When you offer a solution, explain the policies that need to be enacted in order to solve the problem and or share a list of demands. But we need to completely dismantle the Minneapolis Police Department. And we need to be out here demanding that they pass the statute of limitation for wrongful death. Yes. That statute and qualified immunity. Yeah. And reopen all the cases, get them assigned to the Attorney General's office, Keith Ellison, so they can be reopened. Another protest speech structure is the public narrative, originally documented by Marshall Gantz. It's now used by the organization he founded called the Leading Change Network. The public narrative structure has three parts. The first part, story of self, is my personal story, experience, and values. The second part, story of us, is our shared stories, experiences, and values. And the third part, story of now, transforms the present into a time to act. James Croft demonstrates the public narrative speech structure masterfully at a protest about LGBTQ bullying. First, he tells his own story of being bullied for being gay. And one of my teachers, a PE teacher, used to make fun of me. He used to say how girly I was, how dancing is not something that a boy should do. I remember the sneer on his face as I walked past, and I remember that he was the first person to call me a fag, which at seven years old, I didn't really understand. I remember in high school how gay was only ever used as a term of abuse. 
Then he talks about how all of us can relate to being bullied for something. Now, not everyone may have experienced something like that, but we all know, I think, what it means to feel alone, to feel like there's no one on our side. Perhaps you were too tall and the short kids made fun of you. Or perhaps you were too short and you got it from the taller ones. Or perhaps you were too smart or too dumb or from the wrong side of town or the wrong race. We all know, I think, even if just for a moment, what it feels like to think that there's no one on your side, to think that no one has your back. Last, he creates a sense of urgency about acting now to prevent additional youth suicides from LGBTQ bullying. I was a high school teacher, and every day I wasn't out was a day I deprived a gay student of a positive role model. And I'm not willing to waste any more time. I have to act now. We have to act now. Because it isn't enough to let these things happen and then mourn them afterwards. We need to catch these kids before they jump. Repeat key phrases. Repeating keywords at the beginning, middle, and or end of a sequence of sentences can make your message memorable. Martin Luther King Jr. masterfully used repetition in his famous I Have a Dream speech. Not only did he repeat I Have a Dream eight times, he also repeated other phrases such as 100 years later, now is the time, and we can never be satisfied. Sojourner Truth, in one of the most famous abolitionist and women's rights speeches in American history, powerfully repeated the question, and ain't I a woman? The world wasn't wrong, the world wasn't wrong when we, we stood out and stood up for Emmett Till. The world wasn't wrong. The world wasn't wrong when we marched for Rodney King. The world wasn't wrong. The world wasn't wrong when we marched for Philando. The world wasn't wrong when we marched for Thurman Blevins. The world wasn't wrong when we marched for George Floyd. The world wasn't wrong when we marched for Breonna Taylor. The world wasn't wrong. Share your vision. Eric Liu, in his book, You're More Powerful Than You Think, writes, you have to expand the public sense of what's possible by asking provocative and audacious what if questions, by describing a better way in detail, and by offering a new values-based definition of what ought to be considered normal. And I want you to think about the young person in your life who gets to grow up in a city without police. I want you to think about what's going to be different about their life. I want you to think about what you all helped make possible today. I want you to think about the smile that they have when they get to walk to the grocery store and never have to fear for their life again. Give a call to action. Giving a call to action, which is basically asking the attendees to do a specific task that will help your cause, is one of the best ways to ensure your speech is effective. In their book, Rules for Revolutionaries, Becky Bond and Zach Exley share, people are waiting for you to ask them to do something big. So channel the crowd's enthusiasm to the next step of your overall strategy by putting them to work and keeping the momentum going. If you only say vague things like, join together, rise up, and fight back, many people will leave not knowing what they can do to help. Make sure the crowd knows exactly how to do the action you are requesting. We want you to start calling Alondra Cano, start emailing Alondra Cano, start showing up on her social media and demanding that she stand for justice for Calvin Horton until his killer is brought to justice. Know your main point. A key point can be simple enough to be expressed in one sentence. What's your sound bite? If just a few seconds of your speech gets streamed online, which words would you want shared? Rob Cottingham, in his article, Speaking at a Rally, Here's How to Make It Count, suggests helping listeners know what your main point is with a signal. Like, if you take nothing else away from today, let it be this. If nothing else that you can take from all these stories that you have heard, I believe that is the, the, the main, the, the most important nugget that you may take with you. No matter what you face, no matter what your circumstances, no matter how people may make you feel a certain point, know who you are, know who you want to become, 
and keep your eyes on that finish line. Publicly pressure decision makers. Hold politicians and other people with power accountable by calling them out by name for their deeds and or publicly asking them to respond or act. Just two days before the first COVID death in Philly jails, Judge Tucker had this to say about the current crisis in our jails. Organizers and people who are incarcerated make it seem like prisons are a petri dish. But according to the CDC, the whole world is a petri dish. Uh, what? It's not as if they're lying in jail with no one caring. They do have medical staff there. And I think some of the individuals are using this pandemic as a way to get out of jail. Judge Tucker's words are disturbing and they are dangerous. Murderer! Murderer! They make a mockery of the danger our incarcerated brothers and sisters face every single day in our jail. Allow your emotions to show. Be real, speak from the heart and personal experience. It's okay here if your hands shake, your voice breaks, and the audience sees your pain. Authentic rage and tears are understandable. Speak with energy and the emotions you feel about the issue. Use large gestures and facial expressions if they fit how you feel. Pause. Pause at strategic points to let the audience process and react to your words. GEO and CCA detention centers are concentration camps. Yeah. Where modern slavery is practiced. We're billion of profits where the only beneficial are corporations, politicians, and government that have turned the issue of immigration into a profitable business. Pause if you're feeling emotional and need a moment to collect yourself. This also gives the audience a chance to support you with some encouragement. A pause can reflect the length of time of a significant event. At the 2018 March for Our Lives rally, Emma Gonzalez paused her speech until 6 minutes and 20 seconds had passed, the length of time of the Parkland school shooting. We're going to start um, the, the Brown family asked that every rally and every protest begin with four and a half minutes of silence. Um, in honor to honor Michael Brown and the four and a half hours that he laid out in the street in Ferguson. Four and a half minutes, please. Honor the culture's present. Communicating a few words in the language of the cultures in attendance can help the audience to connect with you and feel welcome. A brief greeting or introduction in another language is an easy way to do this. Buenas tardes. Mi nombre es Angelica. Me no toca Angelica. My name is Angelica. When applicable, some people acknowledge they are meeting on traditional indigenous territory. Well, first of all, I want to acknowledge the Ohlone people. Yeah. The traditional inhabitants of this land on which we gather, on which we protest. Get the details right. Using the correct or just preferred names of people, organizations, and policies shows respect and that you know what you're talking about. Sometimes a name is spelled out letter by letter and takes an article like the ACLU. Sometimes it's pronounced as an entire word, like NAFTA, and takes no article. And other times there's no acronym or abbreviation, like with the Paris Agreement. To pronounce names correctly, it can help to write them phonetically in your notes. And getting the specifics of social media account names, hashtags, and instructions for a texting task correct minimizes confusion. If you agree with me, go to Joe 303. Introduce yourself. Unless someone has already introduced you with your name, organization, and connection to the protest, quickly establish who you are and your connection to the cause. Even if most people there know you, there will be people who don't. 
Your speech might also be streamed online where many people won't know you or your organization. And people might want to join your group or contact you for an article, show, or podcast after the protest. Good evening, everyone. My name is Alexis Kramer. Um, I represent an organization called Freedom from the Streets. I help, well, actually, I help the Powderhorn guests here. Um, I actually used to work with them at Sheraton Hotel. But I help people who are experiencing homelessness, on the verge of being homeless, and formerly homeless, deal with barriers to permanent housing. Create a bridge briefly referring to performers or speakers who are on before or after you makes for smooth transitions. Making a connection between their message and yours creates a meaningful flow in your event. Thank you for that message of solidarity encompassing the pain and experiences of uh, many families that did not receive justice. So thank you for being out here for everyone and acknowledging that. I am Monique Colors Doty, organizers with Twin Cities Coalition for Justice and Black Lives Matter. I am also the honor of Marcus Golden, killed by St. Paul Police in 2014. So I really understand that message and I thank you for it. Be flexible. In the War Resisters League Organizer's Manual, Ed Hedeman suggests speakers be flexible in your presentation in order to play off or react to the audience. It's okay to pause your planned speech to improvise a response to something that arises at the event. Now we're asking you to be of service. So go home! <laughs> Say that again? I said to go home! She said go home. <laughs> and when a black woman tells you to do something, you probably should listen. She said, go home and get some rest, y'all. Look at the audience. Reading your speech from your phone or paper notes with your head down bores the audience. Keeping your head up and speaking to the audience like you're having a conversation with them improves their connection with you. Rehearsing beforehand can help you do this. Only putting keywords and short phrases in your notes instead of the complete text of your speech helps you to just occasionally glance at them instead of reading with your head down. Make sure people can hear you. Acoustics and sound systems can be less than ideal. There's often a lot of chatter and other background noise you're competing with, and masks can make the sound muffled. So keep your mouth close to the microphone or bullhorn and use your outdoor voice. Keep it short. Your audience has likely been standing on tired feet in less than ideal weather listening to many speakers for a long time. In George Monbiot's book, Out of the Wreckage, he writes that public demonstration speeches have one thing in common. They are always too long. Sapora Berman, a Canadian environmental activist who has been speaking at protests for three decades, recommends keeping your protest speech short, short, short. Running overtime can be costly and problematic for the organizers who might be fined if they don't clear the park by a certain time. And their featured speaker might be on a tight schedule. So unless you're a featured speaker or a charismatic celebrity, aim for about five minutes. Thank the attendees. Thanking everyone for coming out makes all attendees feel welcome, appreciated, and part of the cause. This can increase the likelihood of them attending your events in the future. Expressing gratitude to specific people, communities, organizations, and or demographic groups creates good vibes and relationships. Guys, we have a great coalition out here today. I see white people, I see black people, I see young people, I see old people. So much for supporting us in Philando, being out there, making sure y'all show us that y'all love us for Justice Squad, the um, 10K, all the organizations that's been supporting us and giving back and making sure that we have a voice and we have a platform. Your ideas? What would you add to this list for giving a powerful, effective, and or memorable protest speech?